Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Once again, our text is our gospel lesson, St. Luke 23, 27 to 43, Dear Friends of Christ. Don't we all want to be remembered in some way? Business people give out cards so they are remembered. Families take pictures or videos of their children to remember them at different stages of their life. People give money to organizations to have a plaque or building named after them. And in death, most of us will be remembered with a marker or a headstone to mark where we are buried. Now, how would you want to be remembered on that headstone? Well, apart from my faith in Christ, I have told my family that I want this as my remembrance. He never paid a finance charge. Yes, we would all like to be remembered. Now this morning in our gospel lesson, various people remembered the man, Jesus of Nazareth, at the time of his crucifixion. But as at his second coming, will he remember us? The enemies of Jesus certainly remembered him. The rulers, he saved others, let him save himself. The soldiers, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. The criminals, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. Now, none of these people believed that Jesus was the savior of the world, but they used the verb save. In an indirect way, Jesus' enemies were given a public testimony to who he was and what he had done. On Saturday, March 17, 2012, the Bolton Wanderers and the Tottenham Hotspurs, two soccer teams in England, were playing a match in the quarterfinals of the playoffs. With thousands of people watching, Bolton's midfielder, Fabrice Muamba, suffered a cardiac arrest and collapsed on the field. His heart stopped for 76 minutes. Under the mesmerized gaze of those watching medical personnel work to revive him, many put their hands together to intercede for him. Benoit Aso Akado, a Tottenham player, said this in an interview. Saturday was one of those days that will stay with me forever. Then again, I hope it stays with us all. There are some moments that make you look at the world with different eyes. But sometimes in those moments, there is a special power because people connect. People see the human in each other and people feel another's pain. Moamba has survived and is gradually improving. As Jesus made his journey to the cross and at his crucifixion, great crowds saw his pain, but few, it seems, saw how his pain was really for them, for Jerusalem, for the women and children, for the thieves, for all of us. Few seemed to see that his suffering was what they deserved that his pain was releasing them from theirs. But for some, a few, it was an eternity-changing experience. You see, that was the case with the two criminals crucified with Jesus. Now, Matthew and Mark tell us in their Gospels that at both, or at first, both criminals taunted Jesus. But Jesus did not respond in anger. For the most part, we know he remained silent. But then the second criminal began to have a transformation. Perhaps it was Jesus' prayer, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now after the initial taunt by the first criminal, the second criminal says, Do you not fear God, 
since you are under the same sentence for condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we are receiving our due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Turning to Jesus, the repentant criminal makes a request. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus, by divine authority, can make this promise to him. Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. We're under the same sentence of the criminals. We too hang in shame because of misdeeds, words spoken in haste, actions that embarrass us. We know what it is like to be weighed down in guilt. We need the same rescue as the criminal on the cross. And we have it. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he does. You and I have the same precious response. Truly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. He suffered and died for all of us. May our eyes be fixed on Christ as our only hope and comfort. You see, an earthly ruler gathers taxes from his people. The heavenly ruler gives his son to the people. An earthly ruler demands. The heavenly ruler offers. God spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. An earthly Caesar fills his coffers with the coins of the people. The heavenly ruler sends his son that people might have treasures in heaven. Christ is going to come again on the last day. And for those in the faith, that is going to be a life-changing experience. Because in baptism, our names are written in the book of remembrance. In the Lord's Supper, we are assured of paradise. Thanks be to God, in His grace and mercy, He has remembered us. Amen.